Hey folks, welcome back to the channel, and here is a transformer that happened that probably shouldn't really have happened, but since we have them, hey, we, we might as well take a look at them, right? This is the Transformers Beast Hunters Deluxe Class, apparently, Starscream, and he's going to be our focus in the latest Gothbot True review. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I am your host, Dennis Moulton, aka Gotbot. As always, I am humbled that you are here. Please check me out everywhere. Have a look at Machinery of Man and the Everything Factor. Uh, why not spend some time on the channel, see what tickles your fancy, have a look at Season 1 of Universal Collision and a couple of other stop motions I've done in the lead up to Season 2. And this is a weird figure, to say the very least. Um, we're going to measure them as we always do, but it's a little bit challenging with this guy, and I'll explain that as we go. First things first, I think he looks cool. It's certainly different. It, in no way, shape, or form does this remind me of or seem to embody the Transformers Prime rendition of Starscream at all. The silhouette, I guess, and the spindly arms and legs, but the color is definitely not. If anything, the touch of purple that's with the black might evoke a little a little bit of sky warp, maybe? But I think that that's a stretch. As far, looking at it objectively, as far as, you know, paint apps go, um, zero. It, it's not Starscream. But in terms of him looking like a cool Starscream, I, I like the look of him. I would give it like a solid 8. I think he looks really great, but I'm trying to be objective here, and that's sometimes challenging to do, but yeah, zero, because it doesn't look like the guy. Um, okay, so not a strong start, but we're going to jump in very shortly to posability, playability, just so you have an idea of how this guy sort of scales. Here he is with another couple of Starscreams, uh, this being the FOC Deluxe Class Starscream, my custom FOC uh, version that I looked at way back in episode 112. This is kind of my go-to Starscream. I love this guy. Still do. Um, here he is with the, and I did not like this mold, um, largely because straight out of package, his legs literally fell off. I used a lot of floor polish to fix them. A lot of people love this this mold. This is the R.I.D. Um, Starscream. I, I looked at him in full in episode 126. But like I said, I didn't like him. He was... The tolerances were awful. After doing the floor polish fix, he's pretty great now. I never bothered to get Sky Warp because I was so disappointed in this. If you got a good copy of him or Skywarp or both, then hey, good on you because it's one of those figures that I said should have been a good toy. Kinda like Steelbane. There's another awful one for you. Articulation for this guy. Well, we have uh, an, an, an antenna. I don't, I don't really know why this piece is here. I don't see the point of it. The head goes left and right and looks up and down, so full range of motion on the head. The arms can go well out to the sides. I'll even straighten this out. Well out to the sides, no problem. The shoulder pieces even move a little bit, so that's pretty great. Um, they can go, you know, assuming you get the wings kind of out of the way, they could rotate all the way around. But still, I mean, for what we have, even with the wings blocking it, it it's a pretty full range of motion. Uh, we have not a bicep swivel. What we have is a, an elbow to just over 90 degrees, but it's on a ball joint, so you kind of fake the bicep swivel there. The wrists don't really do... Oh, no, we have a wrist swivel. Sorry, my mistake. We have a wrist swivel. Uh, wrist swivel. I don't know if I said that right. Nothing at the waist, uh, which again really doesn't sort of shock me for how spindly this guy is. Uh, the legs, they can go well forward. 
the legs can go well back even with the backpack there. Uh, very, very deep knee bend, which I totally dig. This, whatever this is on his kneecap, that moves. Um, the feet, I guess, can technically go forward and back. Uh, the heel and toe, I think they're independently, yeah, they're independently articulated, so you can move that to kind of help with standing, because the guy is a bit rough when it comes to standing. Overall, though, in terms of the poses you can get with him and whatnot, I would have to give his articulation, it'd be nice to have a waist, it'd be nice if the feet were a little more stable, but overall it's a solid eight. The guy stands pretty great. It's a, surprisingly, it's a pretty solid figure for something that it looks like it would be so slight and looks like it would have so much kibble banging into it. Now, he does come with this large accessory that's a, it can go in his hand. It's a huge red grabber thing that has like a pair of pinchers at the the end. I don't have that here, largely because this isn't mine. This belongs to the Scraplets, and I appreciate them letting me take a look at it. But I don't know where they have that gun. Besides, it is a ridiculous, ridiculous accessory. I don't know why it was included. Uh, he does also come with his little shoulder missile pod things and there's a couple of rectangular pegs on it and those rectangular pegs um, actually a couple of rectangular pegs and um, maybe I should show this, I'll take him out of it and show this up closer there's a couple of there's a couple of rectangular pegs right here and you also have a couple of holes on the other side the holes go over, I'm going to try to show this close too, the holes go over a couple of slots there on his arm. So truth is, they actually stay on quite securely on his arms if you want them to. Um, I, it, I don't, I never understood why this guy seemed to have these like rockets on his arms rather than like your typical laser shooting null rays. I, I don't know. I never got it. By the way, for articulation, the wing pieces here uh, can also move just a little bit. Um, it's really for transformation, but it, it can help to get them out of the way a bit and they do, you know, flex up and down just ever so slightly. So, we're going to take these out of his arms. That's not supposed to happen. We're going to take those out of his arms and if I can find the other one here, I will get it. And we're going to move right into transformation with this guy. Uh, now, be warned, I don't have instructions and I haven't changed this guy in a long, long time. So, this might get a little bit rough at points, we shall see. I will say this as well. Originally, uh, this is the second actually version of this figure. There was one that was bought and me being a Butterfingers and fiddling with him during transformation, I actually ended up tearing off the entire chest section and broke it. The plastic is not that thick. Uh, he was replaced, this one has not been broken. Uh, and it wasn't because the plastic itself is fragile, it's because the way it tabs in and whatnot, it wasn't clear to me where I had to pull it from and I pulled too hard and I broke it. Um, so that was my own, that was my own dumb fault I guess. So we take up his little antenna thing and we can close up his feet. By the way, if I do something wrong here, please feel free to point it out to me because, like I said, I don't have instructions. It's been a long time since I've done this guy. Uh, the backpack, we take that off. And the head, actually, I guess, we'll take the backpack off. We'll straighten out the arms there as well. So we'll do that much for now. Now, it's down here. Um, where I ended up accidentally, I guess, pulling it out. This whole chess piece tabs in rather tightly, and because it tabs in so tightly, it doesn't always make it easy to unpeg it. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna try here now, and we'll see. 
Let's see how I go. There you go. Because I was trying to bring it up from the sides, uh, if I'm not mistaken. The head. What do we do with the head? There you go. The head comes back through a little opening here in the backpack. That's what I thought. The head kind of, you, you swill it back like he's looking up toward the sky and you bring it through an opening there in the backpack. When you lift out the chest, I made a mistake here, so I'm going to go back and kind of remedy it now. When you lift out the chest, you actually need to angle it up so that this section right here, which is actually the, the dome of the cockpit, I'm going to back this up a little bit, which is actually the dome of the cockpit, locks in. Then, when you come to the back where you had it lifted out, there's a black hinge in here. You straighten the black hinge out, and then you bring the back up over and bring this piece down. Now you have the top of the jet. Pretty much done. So we take the legs and they're on a hinge here that swivels all the way back. Straighten out the legs thusly. What we have is a couple of pegs on the legs that are going to go pegged in, but you see as of yet there's nothing to peg them into. That's because though you start to angle the legs back, you don't bring them back all the way. There's a hinge here at the shoulder and you fold in the arm and you fold in the arm. Um, I've never been sure what to do with these shoulder sections. I've always just sort of pressed them forward. But we have the arms in here now. Okay, and not only do we have the arms in here now, but the arms have, I guess I should have shown this before I pushed it up. The arms have little tabs on the inside of the forearms that go up into little slots on the black. So it does lock them into place. You bring that one up, and you bring that one up. And they both should lock in just like that. Uh, now, if you have the arms positioned correctly, you're going to have the two, uh, I guess, holes on the forearms facing the bottom of the plane. And you're going to have... Uh, the, on the side of the arm, you're going to have opening, uh, a little rectangular, I guess, slot, like right there. We're going to take the legs out to the side, like that. Um, you'll kind of know, like you're sort of splitting, splitting the legs, but they're not at a 90 degree angle or anything going down. They're at this sort of an angle going down. When you do that, <clears throat> what you're going to end up having is a tab on the leg that will go into the slot that's on the arm. We lock that one in, and we lock that one in, oh, this one came out, like that. And now these feet that we put together, you take those out to the side, I wonder, yeah, you take those out to the side, and in the end, here you go, you have Starscream, if I'm not mistaken, unless I've done something terribly wrong, in his plane mode. Um, the little rocket pieces, now you'll see on the wings that we have two rectangular openings. The little rectangular pieces that I pointed out to you earlier go in there. Like that, and one on the other side. Like that. Uh, if the, let's say the knee pieces were left out, you can put them in. Uh, these pieces here, you can sort of angle them how you want. They're supposed to be ear intakes. So I would angle them back so that they're kind of tight on his leg. And here's what the underside of him should look like, if you have everything lined up correctly. And here's what the top looks like. And the side. Um, does he have a landing gear? He does have a little landing gear uh, that you can pull down right here, so he can rest like that. Uh, it's, I think it's a cool looking plane mode. I still don't know why this antenna piece was here. I don't know if it's, if it's true to his plane. And I probably don't have things lined up perfectly correctly because it's not staying down there. It is soft rubbery plastic, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, no, it's, it's a harder plastic, but it feels very, I don't know, very slight. 
I think it's a cool looking play mode. The transformation to get here does of course have a robot on the bottom, but because it's all sort of flattened out, I think it's an interesting way to handle it so that it's still relatively sleek, all things considered. I said the paint was a zero. I said the articulation was an eight, which made this guy about a four. The transformation is pretty good. It's just, I feel like that everything is so slight and small and thin on him that you need to be careful with it. I'm going to score that a seven. It's interesting. It's pretty cool. Everything tabs in nicely, but remember, I already broke the chest off of one of these because the pieces are slight. The only thing I could think of to describe it is like the, the arms of the Generations RC figure. They work fine, but they feel delicate. I feel like a lot on this guy feels delicate. He was a four, he just got a seven. Overall, this Starscream is about a five and a half. It's not that great, but... It certainly is interesting for somebody that's looking for something a little bit outside the box. Anyway, that's it for this guy. Let me know what you think of him. And uh, as always, I appreciate you dropping by, giving me some of your valuable time. And I look forward to the next time that you and I get together for another visit right here inside the videos.